Welcome to Kids Connect. Today we have an exciting H2O story for you. And before we get started with it, I wanna challenge you to think of a couple of things while you watch it. First, I want you to um, think about what are you learning about how God loves people? And then secondly, I want you to think, am I, are you, are we ever like the hero in the story? And if so, how? And then what would God have us do? Enjoy the story of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city. Hey, excuse me, mister. Are you pretending to be God? No, little boy. I am only the narrator. Oh, okay. Thank you for the clarification. As I was saying, or as God was saying to Jonah, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. However, the hero of our story was somewhat reluctant to carry out this task, and instead he hopped on a boat heading in the opposite direction. And while he was on his way to Tarshish, a mighty tempest began to blow across the sea. The terrified mariners began crying out to their pagan gods for help, while our friend Jonah was fast asleep. What do you mean, sleeper? Arise! Call on your god! Perhaps your god will consider us so that we may not perish. Arr. I, uh, let me get dressed and I'll meet you on deck. Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. As the lots were cast, the lot fell on Jonah. Hey, Mr. Narrator Man. Hey, interrupting child. What's a lot? It is how they used to appeal to God to try and determine the answer to something they could not know by themselves. Like drawing a long straw out of a handful of short straws. Oh, I thought it was lots of something. Like lots of chocolate. That sounds good. I like lots of chocolate. Yes, that sounds delicious. However, the sailors discovered that Jonah was the cause of the storm. Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is ye occupation, and where do ye come from? What is ye country, and of what people are ye? Ye am, uh, uh, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the dry land. What shall we do to ye that the sea may be calm for us, for it is tempestuous? Pick me up and throw me into the sea, and then the sea will become calm for you. For I know this great tempest is because of ye, I, I, I mean me. And so the sailors reluctantly picked up Jonah and threw him overboard, praying for God's forgiveness for fear of them being found guilty of ending Jonah's life. When the seas ceased from raging, the fear of God came over the sailors, who offered sacrifices and made vows to the Eternal. And yet, as he was sinking in the vast waters, Jonah's life did not come to an end that day for God had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. I thought it was a whale. No, it says it was a fish. But a whale's big and makes more sense. It says fish. Okay, I kind of like whales better. Listen, dear sweet boy. Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, which is highly significant, by the way, but that's for another story. Oh. So what are you in here for? As he was sitting in a rather smelly, soggy and saddened state, Jonah prayed to God. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around me, weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth, with its bars, closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. After three days and three nights, God spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land.
Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. And this time Jonah did as he was instructed. Now Nineveh was a huge city, and Jonah cried out, saying, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Here? What he say? Forty days in this place is toast? Oh, we better change our ways. The people of Nineveh surprisingly responded the right way, and the king made the following proclamation. Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? And so God relented from destroying Nineveh. Phew, that was a close one. Indeed it was, but Jonah wasn't happy. In fact, he was angry that Nineveh repented and asked God to take his life. That's strange. Jonah did his job, the people were sorry, and God was merciful. Isn't that a happy ending? Well, you're right. But maybe the lesson of repentance was more for the benefit of Jonah rather than the people of Nineveh. You see, as he sat on the hillside outside of the city, God caused a plant to grow and provided him with shade. But then the plant died and without the shade he grew faint under the hot sun and Jonah became angry again and just wanted to die. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And Jonah said, It is right for me to be angry, even to death. Oh, you silly little plant. You were once alive and provided me with shade. But now you've just gone and died. And I'm so mad. So mad. I'm so, so mad. He's so mad. In fact, I'm so mad I'm angry. Mad, mad, mad. I'm angry even unto death. Angry. That's, that's enough of that. I'm so mad. Ooh, yes, I am so mad. Ooh, I'm so, so mad. I'm even angry. I'm angry unto death. Death, it's that bad. I'm serious. You're a silly little plant. You should still be alive, but now you aren't. In fact, I'd like to find some other source of shade because it's ridiculously hot out here. I'm mad. He's so mad. I'm so, so mad. So, so mad. I'm so very mad. I'm even angry. Angry unto death. Then God said, You have had pity on the plant, for which you have not labored, nor made it grow, which came up in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which are more than 120,000 persons, who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock? And so Jonah learnt the lesson of the magnitude of God's love and forgiveness, that even while the whole world commits sin, he is merciful and has a plan to bring the whole world out of slavery to sin and into a life of godly righteousness. Ooh, the end? Yes, little boy. That is the end of the story. <laughs>